there is a great deal of research and practice wisdom to tell us how we can engage youth in science and engineering programming. Fortunately for us, SciGirls has consolidated this knowledge in the SciGirls 7, Proven Strategies for Engaging Girls in STEM. While geared toward girls, these strategies work equally well for boys. We'll review each of these strategies and we've asked Lisa Regala to provide some tips to help you apply them in your unique program situations. Number one, girls benefit from collaboration, especially when they can participate and communicate fairly. That sounds simple enough, but there are pitfalls in implementing group work. There are two main kinds of groups that you can set up, cooperative and collaborative groups. And so um, collaborative groups is where no one has a predetermined role. So everyone is, is there and you get your challenge and you get to work, um, which can work sometimes, but sometimes it can lend itself to some kids taking over and others not having a voice and not having a chance to belong. So if you see something like that happening, you can switch to doing a more cooperative group, which would be, I'm gonna assign roles. So you're gonna be the note taker, you're gonna be the one holding the tools, um, you're gonna be the, the spokesperson for the group. Um, and so that you can assign those roles based on what you're seeing with your group. So if you know you have a child who's a little bit shy, you know, make sure that you give them a more prominent role, a more prominent position to kind of bring out um, bring that out of them and hopefully the others will help encourage that um, as you go along. The other thing to experiment with is different um, mixing up genders. So it might be good to have um, all, all, if you have um, a group of all girls and a group of all boys mm -hmm. and just try that and see if maybe some of the girls that were being kind of quiet in the mixed gender group will suddenly spring to life and, and have a voice um, in that way. And even if you wanted to not just do girls and boys but Okay, if you have a group of, of quieter kids, we'll just match them all together and then see when all of those quiet kids are together, you know, who springs up as kind of a leader in that group. Number two, girls are motivated by projects that they find personally relevant and meaningful. Letting youth select their own question and project is important. Encourage youth to find the science and the engineering questions that are hidden in their project. Science is all around us. Sometimes it is just a matter of looking for it in the issues and questions that interest us. Number three, girls enjoy hands-on, open-ended projects and investigations. This sounds great, but how can we ensure effective science learning? So when you have open-ended investigations, the concern can be time. Do you have enough time to really let things evolve and let them explore and take things in their own direction? And um, there's a couple ways you can deal with that. So if you, for instance, have um, an after-school program that meets once a week, every week for you know the next six weeks. So okay, you can take one investigation, but do it over six weeks. So you don't get it all done in an hour because you can't get it all done in an hour. So you just pick up with it next time and the next time and the next time until you really let the exploration happen just over a longer period of time. Um, another way to, to kind of deal with that is, um, okay, well, keep exploring at home. And so, you know, maybe you have to kind of be okay with the fact that you might not finish and that's okay, but send the kids out with sharing what they got so far and having that still be an accomplishment moment. And then, okay, so how are you gonna take this home and keep going? How, do you wanna meet up with your group at a separate time? Or, you know, is there a way to kind of extend it and keep the learning going at home and keep them exploring on their own, which, you know, takes it outside of your experience and into their, into their lives. This has implications for our control of the investigative work as well as how much time we spend on the science content versus the science process. In SciGirls, and I think a lot of you know, 4-H and any kind of science and engineering, we really emphasize the process. It's not about the end result. It's not about having this thing necessarily to take home and, and leave with, but it's about learning how to think, learning how to think critically, learning how to approach a problem, learning the really important um, science process skills, you know, observing and classifying, um, that that's really what we're after. And so if it fails, that's okay. You still learn something by going through that process and getting to where, to where you are. 
Number four, girls are motivated when they can approach projects in their own way, applying their creativity, unique talents, and preferred learning styles. How do we facilitate this to ensure the science inquiry process is followed? A lot of kids learn differently, so um, you know some kids want to have their hands on the stuff and just get going, but some kids really like to draw. They want to sketch it out. They want to have time to think or to write about it. Um, so I think it, you know, taking that just a couple minutes to plan really helps cater to people that learn in different ways and that need a little time before they do. A lot of times when we're going through a, you know, a science inquiry process. Um, you know, kids get really excited and they have lots of great ideas and when they make a plan for how they want to approach the problem, it, they might be changing too many variables at a time and, and they, they just have so many things that they want to test and do. But you know as an educator that their plan isn't actually going to lead um, to a result at the end of the day. So um, there's a couple of things. I think you know that plan phase in the design process and in the scientific inquiry process is really important because that's a time where you can say, okay, before you do, you really need to think about it. And so it's kind of a natural place to, to step in a little bit as an educator and help guide so that before they really get their hands on the materials, you're giving them a little guidance um, along that way. If you're, if you're seeing several groups that are kind of taking a left turn, you can also bring all the groups together and have them learn from each other. So it's not necessarily coming from you, but it's coming from other kids in the class. Well, did you think about this? Or did you try this? Or what about this? Or they might hear someone else's plan and go, oh wait, maybe we should be thinking about this a different way. So if at all possible, if you can have it come from other kids in the group, um, then it's not you as the expert up there um, guiding them through. Number five, Girls' confidence and performance improve in response to specific positive feedback on things they can control, such as effort, strategies, and behaviors. I figured out how to test it on humans. Okay. Yeah, so we were thinking. Can you provide some examples? It's so important to um, keep giving positive reinforcement and really to give that specific feedback on things that they did well. Maybe they were really great at communicating with their team members or they were great at sketching their design or they made a great plan or they thought out of the box for their design but and to, so that they really feel encouraged and supported in what they did accomplish even if their prototype maybe didn't work as, as they planned. Number six, girls gain confidence and trust in their own reasoning when they are encouraged to think critically. But sometimes thinking critically means disagreeing with our peers. How can we make this emotionally safe? I think we should take a vote. So raise your hand if you want this one. Sometimes when like someone has an idea and someone else has an idea, then we're sort of like, uh, I really want my idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so critical thinking is really important in um, encouraging science and engineering activities and um, you know kids can be kind of shy to want to step up and challenge an idea that's in their group and I think there's a couple important ways to, to deal with that. Um, one is that you set up some ground rules that everyone agrees on from the beginning. So before you even start with your group let's just say okay what, what are going to be our roles our rules or our guidelines or whatever they might be for this um, activity and then let that come from the kids well we're going to be respectful we're going to listen to other people's opinions we're going to um, give you know positive reinforcement we're going to um, you know, provide constructive criticism and constructive feedback and and let that come from the kids and post those on a wall so everyone can see them and so that when there is a challenge or there is a conflict in the group, you can say, oh, remember, you know, we said we're going to be a safe space. We said we're going to respect um, others' ideas. And that can really be a way that, okay, everyone agreed on that at the beginning, so people feel accountable um, to it. And the other thing is to make sure that kids know that it's okay to, once they have an idea, that they just have to have um, evidence to support their claim and support their idea, and that's really important in science. So it's not just that you disagree with what, you know, Sue says over there, but why do you disagree with her? You know, what's what's your evidence to back up why you feel a certain way? And so that can kind of take it out of the argumentative place and into more of a scientific place. And let's really think about 
why we think X or why we think Y. So this is where Tina works. Yeah. Let's go in. Tina is our mentor in Science Club for Girls. Okay, so this is the last flight of stairs until we reach the roof. No. Oh, there's Tina. Hi, Tina. Hey, Tina. Hi, ladies. Tina Hi. is studying at Harvard, and she's getting her PhD in astrophysics. Number seven, girls benefit from relationships with role models and with mentors. But what do we mean by these terms? So one of our SciGirl 7 strategies is about the importance of role models and mentors. And I think those two words mean two different things as well. So um, a role model can be someone you see a photo of, you read a bio of, you, um, you know, maybe you had an email exchange with, or um, you, know, you read about in a book, or someone that you can look up to, but you're not necessarily having a really deep connection with. Whereas a mentor, I would say, is someone that you do have a deeper connection with. They're someone that's, um, you know, helping lead the activity with you or that you can go and meet with one-on-one -on -one, or they came to talk with your group on a couple, a couple occasions. Um, but it's someone that you really feel a closer personal connection to. I think both are really valuable and either one is better than nothing. <laughs> so, you know, if nothing else, Get a role model, show a video, um, bring out some photos, um, have kids read about it, research different careers they can have, um, anything so that they can at least see themselves in that person. They can see the steps that they need to take um, to ultimately get to a career. But if you can get a mentor to come in and really spend more quality time, great. <laughs> How can we identify these people in our local communities? So I think you can find a role model in a lot of different places. So, you know, I think our minds immediately go to, oh, we have to have a PhD scientist who works in a lab that has to come in. Um, but I think that we need to broaden our view of what it means to be a role model and um, to think about finding those role models in lots of different places that, um, you know, it's okay to look to near peers as role models. So if you're working with middle school kids, there can be some high school kids that are just really interested in science and engineering or won the science fair that year or something that can be a role model. Um, if you've got parents or volunteers that are just really passionate about science, maybe they're amateur astronomers in their backyard, I mean, that's great. It still, it still shows how science and engineering is a part of our lives, how it's important, how no matter what you do and what career you choose, taking these classes in science and engineering is going to prepare you for life. It's going to teach you a way to think. Um, and so the great thing about using parents of your students as well is you can also say, hey, do any of you work at a company or at a place that you have scientists or engineers or, you know, have people using science or engineering in an interesting way and have them bring in their coworkers to come in and talk to the kids as well. We can put the negative thread here. Is it lighting up? No. Oh my gosh. Really? Really. Did I think again, maybe we're short circuiting it? They were working before. Why is it doing this? We had a few other questions for Lisa. We asked her for some strategies to deal with youth frustration when their investigation isn't going well. So a lot of times kids can get really frustrated when they're working on a problem and then they're struggling and they're redesigning over and over again and maybe their design isn't quite working as, as they would like. And so um, it can be hard as an educator. You wanna, you want, we wanna help, we wanna jump in, we wanna um, help them succeed. Um, but there is a point that learning how to deal with your frustrations is also an important life skill and, and learning how to come across these challenges and get and get past them is is important and um, this is again when I think you know getting um, other members of the group to kind of come in and help out is important so um, one strategy that that some people use is having um, an ambassador from each group that you have set up and actually take time to have an ambassador go around to each other group and see what they're doing and and learn a bit about each group and where their design is and bring that back to the team so it helps you get over that hurdle of, oh, I've got, okay, I've got some other ideas now of how to get past this and how to move forward. How should we talk about the science content? How do we handle misconceptions? So um, a lot of times when we're, you know, we're doing science and, and engineering activities, um, there's a point where it can 
can seem like all fun and where does the science come in, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's important to let exploration happen, but then, you know, to regroup at the end and talk about what we learn. Um, but I do think it's really important not to position yourself, the educator, as the expert. So you don't have to feel that you have to know all of the answers and that, you know, if, if you're teaching something about physics and you're talking about gravity and you know something great and the kids are, are offering answers, great. But if they come up with something that you're not sure of, that's okay. Let's then say, okay, how can we find this out together? Where would we look um, to find the answer? That's also part of being a scientist and engineer. You know, where do we go to find this information and these questions that we have um, in our lives? So um, you might get an answer that well, it doesn't quite match up <laughs> with what science says. And well, let's talk about that. Why? Why did we get that? Maybe we didn't do the experiment enough times. You know, what, what we saw out there. Um, there's a lot of funny things that, that happen in science. Things don't always work right. So what happened with our experiment? Maybe it was the weather that day or, um, you know, the temperature it was or, or whatever it might be that could have affected um, what we did. The, why did we get something different than we see, you know, in the book or online or wherever we were looking for the answer? The SciGirls 7 provide a quick overview of key strategies to engage girls and boys in science inquiry. Keep them in mind as you plan and implement your science programming.